Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the film House at the End of the Street. Jennifer Lawrence and her mom, Elizabeth Shue, who move into a new house from where they used to live in Chicago to wherever this place is that they never really established, but it's more country than they're used to. And the reason they can rent out the house so cheaply is because this house which is at the end of the street. They got to live there because this murder that happened in this house where this little girl killed her parents, and the son now lives there presently, but the girl who killed the parents also died, and they really wish they could get rid of the house and have him move away, but he lives there, and the town really dislikes him, even though he's a nice, patient boy. But then Jennifer Lawrence meets him by coincidence because she's walking down a dirt road and he offers her a ride because he's such a nice guy and they kind of spark up a romance she is often attracted to go over there and hang out with him and you find out about his creepy sister who lives in the basement you realize his sister didn't die she's living in the basement where he feeds her and takes care of her it's so filled with horror cliches and other horror movie plots and it's badly explained they have flashbacks to show this guy's parents getting murdered and they do it in such a stupid horror movie way with like the camera doing that weird jittery thing like the projectors messed up and several other flashbacks negate other flashbacks which doesn't really make sense because if it was being told through a different perspective that would narratively make sense but really the first flashback which is just to establish the whole the guy's parents getting killed and they seem like relatively normal middle class people living in the country and then throughout the film you find out they were junkies on drugs usually just drugs they don't really get into it i know they smoke stuff with tinfoil i'm not exactly sure what the deal was with that it kept changing but some of it changed from him telling like the boy telling jennifer lawrence stuff and that made sense but the open how why was the opening so different from the rest of them a lot of it narratively was just it was too rushed it was too concerned with the plot it had literally no ambiance it just it wasn't very scary for most of it i think the third act is really the best part when she's running around the house at the end of the street and everything and and that part which is typical kind of very cliched horror it was so badly directed not as bad as the apparition but this is pretty horrible jennifer lawrence thankfully is a good enough of an actress she did her best with what she had really and i thought and she actually wanted to see what she was doing and kind of follow her even though the plot totally sucked this is the best acting i've seen in a bad horror movie in quite a while elizabeth shoe's performance is a little all over the place that might be the editing the cinematography was terrible I didn't like how it was shot at all. There was really no sense of space in a lot of these places, which really needed it. It's trying to do all these different things with the camera, but it really has no theory behind it. It's really just an absolute mess. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence made this uh, like right after Winter's Bone, and they've kind of held on to it forever, and they I think they've given it several release dates. And, you know, kudos for them, because they'll make a ton of money back on a small little investment. But it's really just so rank with cliches, I was thinking like, man, I really want to watch Cabin in the Woods again. <laughs> Especially the third act. I mean, it was kind of fun and had some good cheap scares in it. But literally, it just like it was like every kind of cliche of a third act of a horror movie you can plausibly think of. It was just a really kind of a bad horror movie. It's very lucky to have Jennifer Lawrence, because without Jennifer Lawrence, this movie would be pretty unbearable. The main thing I'm taking away from this is, man, Jennifer Lawrence can make like practically anything work for her at least she did her part i just think everyone else really didn't a lot of the acting was really bad the guy who played the son who lives in the house at the end of the street max throat i think he was horrible he was really bad he was always being quiet and sensitive but he was just so like uncharismatic and uninteresting and as an audience member i didn't really care about him i dislike this movie quite a bit it's just another bad horror movie the directors of this movie couldn't be bothered to like really build on a horror movie build the ambiance they're just so concerned with the plot of this film but the plot was horrible it was like a badly written script they should have like abandoned that and made it like a little more interesting and used their location and use some ambiance it kind of reminds me a little bit of Silent House, which Elizabeth Olsen was in. At least that was interesting. At least that had a gimmick to it. But this doesn't even have that. It really has nothing and no really rewarding qualities to it at all. It's just kind of like a bland, crappy, cheap horror movie or cheap Hollywood horror movie. So if you've seen House at the End of the Street and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.